give each other the last two weeks. The Nats getting the best so far, winning four of the six meetings. Today, the season series comes to an end in D.C. Ross Detweiler and Jorge De La Rosa in an all-lefty matchup on Masson. Harbor, bobblehead day, Rockies at Nats, fourth game of the series, and they were lined up early this morning and opening some boxes as early as 11 a.m. when those gates open. 15,000, I'm sure they went really fast, and we're looking for a big crowd today. Nats are trying to make it a wonderful weekend if they can win three out of four. A couple of news items. First of all, Dan Heron to the DL, Bryce Harper. Well, some balls to the seats. Yeah, we had a feeling Dan Heron wasn't right yesterday. He goes to the DL today. But how about Bryce Harper on his bobblehead day? The fans here at the ballpark took some batting practice, was in launch mode, hit some bombs, and all systems go for Bryce Harper. All right, lefty starters today. Ross Detweiler made a pretty good return to the rotation in Colorado. Jorge De La Rosa. Well, Jorge De La Rosa against the Nats last time. They figured him out after a while, but Ross Detweiler's been doing a good job off the DL. He's getting stronger every start. But with De La Rosa, he is coming off a fantastic start against the Blue Jays where he gave up just one hit over seven shutout innings. But last time against the Nationals in Colorado on June 12th, it took him a while to get to him, but in the sixth inning, it started with the Ryan Zimmerman double to the deepest part of the ballpark. Looked like a home run. I think Ryan thought he got him right there. He hit a little bit too high. And then how about Ian Desmond with the big knock up the middle for the three-run six. The Nats would go on to win that game 5-1. to one. De La Rosa, five and a third, four hits, three runs. The Nats' bats kind of woke up that evening in Colorado. One bat that hasn't slumbered at all is residing in that number two spot with Mr. Rendon. Yeah, I mean, his approach to me is going to be so consistent simply for the fact that he gets his foot down early, keeps his head still, and it's a guy that's staying inside of the baseball so well. You just think he can hit 300 to sleep. Yeah, and not that far under 400 his last 16 games. Hits in 14 to 16 in this series against Colorado, a Cool, 5 for 12. Masson, brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by your local BMW center. Evidently only 14,999 bobbleheads given out. One still at large. It's gotten smaller since he's been on the DL. Don't you think? <laughs> Here at Nationals Park. 
It's a really nice day now. Rain has stopped. We're knocking on wood to have it hold off. Cloudy skies overhead. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. So quite muggy. Look at the humidity and the temperature. Just a couple of clicks over that. Rockies are third in the league in hitting. Second in runs. First in home runs. Dexter Fowler against lefties. Hitting really, really well. The Nats, though, have stopped him in this series. He's one for eight with a walk. Didn't play in the first game, but he sports the sixth best on base percentage in the National League at 390. Ross Detwater, fourth career start against the Rockies, fourth previous appearances, 0 and 2 with a 6-1-9 ERA. But we liked what we saw in Colorado just about a week and a half ago. I mean, like what we saw last time out against Philly, he was out dueled by Cliff Lee, allowed four runs on seven hits over six innings. Struck out four, walk one. But remember, he allowed only one run through the first five innings. Kind of hit the wall in that three-run six last time out against Philly. So two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball. Curve change is what the Rockies will see from Detweiler today. Sixth-year veteran Rob Drake has the plate. Crew chief Joe West first. Sam Holbrook, Andy Fletcher second and third. Here we go. Detweiler to Fowler. Fastball misses up and in. We're underway at 136. The Nats at home are 20 and 14. Rockies on the road, 15 and 21. Both teams sitting at 500. Rockies four back of the D-backs who will be here Tuesday. The Nats five back of the Braves who were shut out in Milwaukee last night. And the Braves not doing anything to open up a big lead. They've lost three straight. 1-1 one, one pitch. Foul tip. And Fowler with that right hand that's been bothering him feels much more comfortable from the right side of the plate than the left side. Able to let go of that top hand. Got a base hit yesterday late right handed. And Ross tried to paint missing the inside edge. Yeah, pretty close pitch right here. Pumps up on 94. Just misses off the plate. 29 strikeouts 10 walks in 57 innings for Ross. Who's two and five with a 3-3-4 ERA. And Fowler will get one off to the right side. Rockies as a team are hitting 271. DJ LeMayu. More hits in this series than any Rocky. Seven. And he's on a five-game hitting streak. Fastball, yes. Fowler got the call on the inside pitch earlier. Detweiler gets this one to the outside edge. Yeah, the velocity from Ross here in the first inning has been impressive. 94, 94, the 95 on the two seamer up and away. And set up by that one down and in before. Fowler might be looking inside. Detweiler goes outside with a plus fastball at 95 here in the first. Yeah, good execution after didn't get a call inside, went to the outside corner. DJ LeMayu in this series, 7 for 13, homered here yesterday. And he's 9 for 21 over that hitting streak of five games. One for two career against Detweiler. Wow, some serious. Down and away action to the right handed batter on that. A good sinker right there at 92. Turned it over. Right center. That ball's going to come tailing back. Good to see Jason Worth back in the outfield, back in the lineup today. Not feeling well yesterday. He'll be batting cleanup when the Nats come up. Set the defense for the Nats today behind Ross Detweiler. Lombardozzi, Coburn is worth in the outfield. Desmond Zimmerman, your left side of the infield. Rendon Marrero, your right side. And Kurt Suzuki behind the dish again. Chris Marrero gets some playing time today. How about that bench? Bernardino, LaRoche, Spann, and Tracy from the left side. Of course, the Rockies bullpen, primarily right-handed. Maybe later we'll see some of those guys. Hopefully, we won't have to. Give them all a breather. Day off tomorrow as well. And here's Detweiler against Carlos Gonzalez. First pitch swinging out of play. 
Carlos two for two against Ross in Denver. But in this series he has struck out five times. And he's one for 13. Still the league leader with 46 extra base hits. I'll tell you what that fastball from Ross here in the first inning has some tremendous life to it. You can just tell by the sound when it's hitting Kurt Suzuki's glove today. that he's throwing a heavy heater. Steve McCaddy watching his lefty get stronger every start since he's been off the DL with that oblique string. No balls two strikes. And going back through the scorebook. Gonzalez two for two against Detweiler is from last year. Remember when Ross pitched that day that's when Cargo got hit in the on deck circle and had to leave the game before he had any at bats. One ball two strikes two outs. Tried to bury one. Down around the knees in the inside corner two two. So no matter what happens to Carlos Gonzalez in this at bat he's already having a better day against Detweiler than he had the first time. <laughs> See he is. And we're happy for that. Good that that could have been a serious injury that he wasn't hurt seriously. And the Nats continue to dominate Carlos Gonzalez. Six strikeouts in this series. Quite a first inning for Ross Detweiler. In the first three games of the series, including 11 in a big win on Thursday night. So today's starting lineup brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Jeff Coburn is in there leading off in place of Denard Span. Ian Desmond, last couple of years against lefties, look at the slugging. The batting average is good. You know, the on base percentage is good. And Ian in the series, three hits, two of them home runs. Boy, you take a picture with a mustache in spring training, it'll haunt you all season. <laughs> Jorge De La Rosa, seventh career start against the Nats. He's three and two with a 4.84 ERA. Previous big league time with Milwaukee, Kansas City. He's been with the Rockies since 08. Yeah, last time out on the 17th at Toronto against that lineup, received the win. Had a no hitter through five and a third. All in all, seven shutout innings, giving up just one hit, struck out four, walked three. Through 95 pitches, 57 of those for strikes. Set the defense for the Rockies behind De La Rosa. Gonzalez, Fowler, Kadire in the outfield. Rutledge, Arenado on the left side. LeMahieu, Pacheco on the right side. And Willene Rosario behind the plate. I watched De La Rosa last time. Did a nice job of keeping the ball down, keeping his defense into it behind him. Arenado with some good plays. LeMahieu with some good plays. Herrera made a nice play at shortstop, so he had a good tempo last time, kept the ball down, had the Blue Jays swinging early and often. Colorado has the fifth ranked defense in the National League. Jeff Coburn has batted second against De La Rosa behind Denard Spann. In Denver, had an early base hit. Gonzalez robbed him of a hit and left, and later he walked, so he gets the leadoff assignment today, and he'll take one outside. Jeff in 13 games, four for 20. With his first big league home run. 
So one for two with a walk against this left handed pitcher. 32 year old Jorge De La Rosa. Inside. Two and oh. He's a guy throughout his career that's been susceptible to the big inning. He'll be cruising along for two or three or four. Then all of a sudden you could put a three or a four spot on him. That's looking to do that early here today. Missing three and oh to the leadoff man. Coburnus six strikeouts two walks so far Anthony Rendon. A big time presence in the number two spot these days. And that's wouldn't mind seeing De La Rosa off the stretch to just about start the game and that's what will happen. Game notes for you. Here comes Anthony Rendon since his recall hitting 367. Some extra base hits scoring runs. Rockies just don't win on the road when the opponents score first. And the Nats pitchers racking up some 10 plus strikeout games. Eight times in the first 48. 12 times in the last 26. Rendon in this series five for 12. De La Rosa got him out a couple of times in Colorado. He throws his first strike of the game on pitch number five. Rips it and foul. Rendon was batting seventh. When the Nats faced De La Rosa on June 12th. A couple of ground balls. And after he left, Anthony had base hits later against the bullpen. Has to battle here on 0-2 against a veteran pitcher. Interesting about the Rockies defense. It's a double play situation for them, but because Rendon has sprayed the ball around so much, FP, they really can't pinch him much up the middle with the middle infielders. Well, that's the advantage of hitting the ball to all fields. And I'll tell you what, he was right on that last offering from De La Rosa. Cobernus has excellent speed. Twenty one stolen bases at Syracuse in forty three games scored thirty three runs. A good lead not a huge one. And the O2 and Rendon stays with that breaking ball that was diving down and in on it. Come down to Hollywood Casino Charlestown races June twenty eighth to thirtieth. Play the Price is Right live stage show HollywoodCharlestown.com for tickets. So second baseman getting base hits more than Matt Carpenter, DJ LeMayu, or Darwin Barney. Yeah, two of the four in today's game. All good young players. Runner goes. They've got him picked off. Kobanis keeps on going, and he's out. On a 1 3 6. I'm trying to figure out right now if Jorge De La Rosa read him right here, but I think this is just a guess and go. He's going first move as soon as De La Rosa picks up his right foot. Coburnus guesses wrong, goes, and that's what you're supposed to do. Just keep running and hope you can beat the relay from the first baseman. Coburnus 0 for 2 now as a big league base stealer. And Rendon will pull another breaking ball. This is what he's been able to do. Gets to two strikes. Fouls off some nasty pitches. Well, it just gives you a good at bat every single time, whether he's going to make an out, get a hit, make the opposing pitcher work a lot like the guy on deck. And Rendon puts it in the air to center. It'll play for Fowler. About 370 feet away, two outs. Big crowd today. Looking for 40,000 possibly. 
It's been a big weekend at the gate for the Nets. Who's uh, average attendance now is up to 33,735. Fifth in the league, creeping up toward 34 grand a game. Here's Ryan Zimmerman, whose most recent at bat left the yard yesterday. He hit a home run against De La Rosa career. Breaking ball down and in. So Ryan hit his ninth yesterday, RBI number 35. Two ribbies in this series. He's two for 11 with a walk. Tommy John surgery over a year ago for De La Rosa. Only made three starts last year. He's been on the DL five times in his career. 61 wins, 55 losses, 145th start today. Throw him a change up on two and on. Oh, that thing was way upstairs. And he's either not feeling too great or really disgusted with that pitch. Yeah, a little walk off the mound right there. Definitely get the attention of Walt Weiss. Maybe upset with the 2 0 offering and where it ended up. It's a day game here today, a little bit cloudy, but you might need sunglasses to hit just because of the brightness of De La Rosa's glove. <laughs> Got the inside edge there. Nats are trying to beat the Rockies five out of seven this year. Trying to make it three out of four here. Skipper's got his shades on. Two out walk. He's walked a couple. And the selective Jason Worth will be coming in. It always, you know, as a former hitter, makes me chuckle when a guy throws a 2 1 changeup and gets upset with himself, and then a 3 1 changeup and gets upset with himself. I mean, you're basically saying you wanted nothing to do with this guy, you didn't want to challenge him. And then you walk around the mound all upset. It's one thing if you throw a fastball for a ball in those counts and you're going after a guy, but if you're showing that you're trying to trick him or maybe you're not that enthused about getting him out, always made me scratch my head that you're going to get angry about that. Well, let's see if Jason Worth can really hack him off. Jason, a tough series Thursday, Friday, 0 for 7 with five strikeouts. Out of the lineup yesterday. He'll take a fastball at 92. And his career against De La Rosa, two for nine, a homer, three RBIs. And we update his Nationals Park numbers, solid. Jason's 15 for 60 since coming off the DL. How about 16 for 61? Two on, one out. And there goes the no hitter. And De La Rosa still has only retired one batter of the first four. Although you give him an assist on the pickoff. I'll tell you what, Carp, as a hitter, when you see a guy flustered and you walk into the box, regardless of the situation, it gives you a small advantage over him. And you saw De La Rosa kind of losing it after he walked Zimmerman and he hangs a curveball here to Jason Worth. He's on it through the 5.5 hole, and that's where the majority of Worth's hits have been going lately. Good at bat. Jason Worth missing yesterday. Sick. Checks in early today. Last time the Nats scored in the first inning, a run Monday at Philadelphia. On a base hit by Jason Worth. So Desmond trying to get the Nats on the board here. He's had some success against De La Rosa in a small sample size. Two for three career, but he'll pop up the first one. Rosario and Pacheco, and they'll yield to the first baseman for the catch. Nats get two walks and a hit. A runner picked off, two stranded. No score.
double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Top of the second. Kadir, Rosario, and Pacheco against Ross Detweiler, who was outstanding in the first inning. All right, let's look at that Diamondback series and what's beyond. Gio and Trevor Cahill Tuesday night. Jordan and Wade Miley Wednesday. Strasburg and Patrick Corbin. What a matchup that is. Corbin's 9-0. That's a Thursday game at 4.05. Then it's on to City Field in New York. WUSA 9 will join us. And there's a day game Saturday in New York. Nats will go to the big city for three days and come right back home. Well, that's got to be the marquee matchup in the big leagues Thursday, right? Hmm. Michael Kadire on a 20 game hitting streak. And in this series, he has gotten rid of the suspense pretty early. All three games he has singled in his first at bat. Oddly enough, his only hits in this series, he has one RBI, three for 12. Deadwater takes a little bit off at 89 2 0. Well, I didn't know it was 20. I went up to him yesterday and asked where he was at. He said 19. I said, liar, liar, Michael Kadire. <laughs> didn't believe him. You've been waiting all weekend to say that. I have. You? 3 0. Hmm. It looks like Rob Drake might have an elevated zone today. Remember the cold strike Deadwater got on Fowler. 3-0. It's up. It's a strike. Willine Rosario, the catcher, is on deck. And Kadire high in the air, right center. That ball is leaving the yard. And for four games in a row, he's hit safely his first at bat. This one's a big fly. His 11th, Colorado, one nothing. I mean, as we speak right now, with what we've seen from the Rockies in these last six or seven games, name me a better right-handed hitter in baseball than Michael Kadire. Yeah. And extends the hitting streak to 21 games. Gets a 3-1 fastball up and away. You see the bat flip. He knew he got him. And the hits keep on coming for Michael Kadire. Impressive. That's now the longest streak in the National League this year. David Fries of St. Louis had one of 20 that ended June 11th. And Kadire's also been on base 40 games in a row now. Wow. It's the longest streak in the major leagues, 21. Here's Rosario, who's one for eight with four strikeouts in this series. That's number 95 for the Rockies. Braves shut out yesterday. They've hit 93. Rosario will for two a uh, career RBI against Ross Deadwater. And a uh, three hopper Marrero to Deadwater. First ground ball out for Ross who as a rule gets a lot of those. We'll see how the strike zone might affect that today if it indeed is up some. Beautiful day from a comfort standpoint with that cloud cover 78 at game time. It was supposed to originally be in the high 80s, maybe touching 90s today. Well, these are the kind of swings you see off Ross Detweiler when that two seam fastball is working. That kind of funky sort of swing from a right hander, weak ground balls to the right side. Fell behind Kadire, left it up, but that's a good sign to see that swing from Rosario off the two seamer from Detweiler. Jordan Pacheco one appearance in the series as a pinch hitter. He's 0 for 1. That's right off the end of the bat. It'll play for Chris Marrero near the bag. Two outs. Same thing, right? You know, that tells you the kind of movement that Deadweiler has. I think that might have been a change up right there at 85, but just off the end of the bat to a pull swing. Another weak round ball to the right side.
Nolan Arenado, the third baseman. And a ball stung to center. Coburn is back right in front of the track, and he takes it. Rocky's flexing the muscles a little bit in the second. Kadire's homer puts them on top. Diamondbacks will be here for three days. The middle game Wednesday night is Dollar Hot Dog Night presented by Hatfield. Available, those dogs are at select concession stands until the start of the sixth inning while supplies last. Some restrictions apply. Nationals.com slash tickets. Check it out for Wednesday night. Let me get some hot dogs up to the booth. Maybe we'll get a Bryce Harper bobblehead up to the booth, too. That would be amazing. He hasn't bobbled his way up here yet. Chris Marrero looking for his first base hit since returning to the Nats. Six games, ten at bats. That's right off the end of the stick. DJ LeMayu will shovel with the glove. Had plenty of time to do it. Inside the numbers, STG Inc. or Hey De La Rosa. When he throws the slider, look at the opponent's batting average. He throws it 14% of the time in the mid 80s. So it says minimum 150 slicers thrown. All those guys have good ones. That's why the Nats loaded up with the right handed bats today. Kurt Suzuki will be next. He's one for three career with a couple of RBIs against this lefty. One RBI this weekend, one base hit. Stands up straight on that right leg as he comes through his delivery. Pretty long pause. Walk the first man on four pitches. Picked off Coburnus. Walks Zimmerman with two outs. And then Worth had a base hit. This one will be handled by Josh Rutledge, who took a good look at the baseball and almost lost the runner. Two ground ball outs here. PNC Bank for the Achiever in you as we look into the minor leagues now for a young player we haven't really talked about this year, and that's Robert Benincasa. He's out of Florida State, seventh rounder, 2012, from Tampa, 6'1, 180. 
And he uh, joined Auburn in early July of last year. Only had 16 games of action at the single-A level last year. So getting things done. Lombard Ozzie showing butt with two outs to try to steal a base hit and get Ross Deadweiler to the plate. Whoops. Anybody see that? Yep, we got it on camera, Ross. <laughs> Shows Bunt again. Bumps it down the third baseline. And having to just get out of dodge was Pacheco. It'll be a hit for Lombardozzi. He'll go to second base on a very wide throw. Normally with two outs, a base hit butt isn't a good play, but when you have the pitcher on deck and you're trying to turn the lineup over, it's a great play. Tried it a couple of times, and if you can bunt on Arenado, you know you laid down a beauty, and Lombardozzi laid down an absolute perfect bunt down the third baseline. Errant throw by Arenado allows him to get to second. Now Ross Detweiler has a chance to tie this game up. And if he does, he has to trip every time he comes out of the dugout. Yeah. One hit this year, three career RBIs. Nats have their second base hit. And I'm sure the Rockies announcers are calling that a very uncharacteristic play by their third baseman. Lombard OZFP got that ball near the line, and that makes the angle a little tougher for a third baseman on that throw. Well, it was a hit as soon as he laid it down. You know, the one thing you have to live with with guys that make the spectacular play is they try to make the spectacular play. And a lot of times you don't. Deadweiler takes one low and inside one one. Kadai are very shallow in right field. That'll be in there with a 92 mile an hour fastball one and two. Yeah, I don't know if Trent Jewett could send Lombardozzi on a base hit to right. Center and left, possibly. And Lombardozzi working hard on his secondary lead. Two strikes, two outs. He'll be going on the swing. Yeah, nobody playing really near the bag here, so he can get a good 30 feet or more by the time the pitch is home. He's actually running now, and Deadweiler's going to take a curveball and strike out looking. Lombardosi trying to manufacture a run. The Nats have stranded three, trailing one nothing. The Association for Global Security Professionals. And uh, right now, where is Julie Alexandria? Hey guys, well, today it was crazy here at Nats Park, specifically in the center field gates area. It's Bryce Bobblehead Day, and look what I got, FP. 
I know, you jealous. No, just kidding. I'm actually just borrowing this from a fan because I didn't get one because I wasn't here at 8 in the morning like these guys were. Fans were lined up at 8 a.m. The gates didn't even open until 11 a.m. and they sold out of these little guys, Mr. Bryce Harper himself, just a little bit after noon. So these things went pretty fast here. I'll give this back to you. I might ask for it back later. But uh, fans who did get here early were lucky enough to catch Bryce Harper taking a little on-field BP, which was the first time he took batting practice here on the field since land being landed on the DL. And let me tell you, he was smacking that ball, hitting some home runs here. It was awesome to see him work. He said he felt good. And as he exited the field, 10,000 fans that were here early, huge cheers pretty awesome to watch. He was pretty happy about it. So he looked great. The bobbleheads are gone. So hopefully, maybe there's some left over for us. Right, FP? Right, Bob? Well, I want one with a bat, first of all. Yours didn't have a bat on it. <laughs> so find the bat to your bobblehead. And second of all, Bryce Harper with a run till they tag your t-shirt. I want one of those, too. I guess I want a lot of things today. <laughs> you guys are worried about everything except getting Bryce back in the lineup. Come on. Well, you see That's that, what I want. You see where that ball hit? Yeah. Back wall. That's why they don't have the ambulance back there anymore because of him. Top of the third. Detweiler a strike to the number eight hitter shortstop Josh Rutledge. Who's had a good series on base six times. Three for six hit by two pitches and a walk. I just want to see the real. Bryce Harper standing out there in the left field. Yeah we can't wait. That was D.L. Bryce bobblehead without the bat that Julie had. Well, I think they come in the in the box. The bats uh, separate. You got it connected yourself. And this one on a hop, two hops to Steve Lombardozzi in left field. Josh Rutledge having some kind of series here since his recall from the minor leagues on Thursday. STG Inc. inside the numbers. Ross Detweiler. So he just doesn't walk many. As I mentioned, not a lot of strikeouts. 29 and 57 innings. But only 10 walks on the year. And if you have that number plus 90% fastball, I mean, you face Ross Detweiler, there's nothing to wait around for, right? Hack. And that's what the Rockies are doing here early. De La Rosa should be bunting two sacrifices this year. And he bunted it in the air hard, and too bad it wasn't close enough for Ryan Zimmerman. De La Rosa and O. 43 hitter this year, 138 career with 17 RBIs. He bunts it to third again and it's in the air. Zimmerman's right there, and if he bunts it on the ground, Zimmerman has a chance at second, and it looks like he's trying to bunt it right into the teeth of the defense. Just the way he has his bat angled is to third. And if you want to sacrifice right here, it has to be to first because Marrero is holding the runner. That's your best chance. One one the count. Bunts it in the air again, way wide of third. And he's just hoping he gets one of those fair. Nats are 25 and 19 with Bryce in the lineup and six under without it. AT&T fact of the game. Six over six under. Lunges and misses batted back for the pitcher. Strikeout number three for Ross Detweiler. That was a good fastball there up and away making it difficult to put in play in case De La Rosa left the strike zone which he did. Fowler was caught looking on a fastball up and away quadrant of the strike zone first time. Pretty good pitch right there. 92 miles an hour. Mercedes on the pitch track. Two seam fastball down the way. Good frame by Suzuki. Rob Drake didn't like it. Yeah, and as we mentioned in the first inning, Rob Drake does not have a low strike zone today. Deadweiler had the runner Rutledge going straight back to first on that move home. And the count's 2-0. I mean, 
Ross has a good fastball. He can live up in the zone some. But his forte is keeping the ball down. And if there are no calls down there, that could be tough. Three and oh. And 91% fastball from Detweiler. Wow, leadoff man swinging on three and oh. He's got pop. Dexter's hit 10 home runs this year. Kind of flexing that right hand after that swing, and that's the one that he injured in Colorado when the Nats were there. Well, I saw him in the in the tunnel after the game Friday night coming for the Rockies clubhouse and he was greeted by some friends and uh, he shook hands with them left handed. He just didn't want to put the right hand out there so you know that thing's tender that was after the first game he started in the series and he was in there again yesterday now today and he's still kind of flexing it right now open and closing his hand between pitches as he steps out of the box so yeah he felt something on that 3 0 hack for sure. In there, and that's partially from the collision he had with Carlos Gonzalez when the Nats were in Denver on that Zimmerman ball, but he also got hit by a pitch on the hand in Toronto, and that just made everything worse from last week. And he got hit by a bunt against the Nats. He ran right oh, into a bunt. That's right. You're right. That was right after the collision, huh? So he's got all a bunch of stuff going on. Three two with one out. Not even close. That's a rare walk by Ross Detweiler. Two on one out, LeMayu coming in. Pick three games, get a free Nationals New Era ball cap. It's the midseason flex pack. While supplies last, some restrictions apply. Nationals.com slash flex. Yeah, Fowler hit in that game. On Thursday by Ross Deadwater had to leave after that at bat. LeMayu flied to right first time. Bounces to Zimmerman who can't quite get there. Ryan made a good dive. No chance for a throw home. Colorado 2-0. Two, two hits around a walk. Right, you look at the pitch of LeMahieu, a guy that's been a Nats killer all season long. Impressive yesterday. Three hits in a home run today. Check it in with his first base hit, an RBI single to left. LeMahieu had three hits in the series at Colorado. He has had eight hits in this series. Eight for 15. Fourth RBI. And now it really gets tough because here comes Carlos Gonzalez and then Michael Kadire. Broken bat. Desmond Rendon turns it. Save for first. Tough to double up Carlos Gonzalez unless the balls hit pretty sharply. Well, they made it close, a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Desmond with a nice exchange right here on the broken bat ground ball from Carlos Gonzalez. Look how quick Desmond got rid of that. And look at Rendon coming across the base. Watch how quick, right on the money, Rendon across the base. He turns it with a good throw. And they made that much closer than it should have been. I mean, clearly safe, but the fact that Desmond got rid of the ball quick, Rendon got rid of the ball quick with something on it. You thought they had a chance all of a sudden. That was well done. Yeah. Good rhythm on a ball not hit that hard. What do you do with Michael Kadir here? Yeah, I think that's what you do do. Well, the majority of his hits have been the other way. He's done a nice job of keeping his hands inside the baseball. Tough to fool right now with his approach, but pound him in and see what happens. Yeah, three of his four hits in the series the other way. And a foul tip held on by Suzuki counts even 1-1.
Long look and time given. Carlos Gonzalez looking like he had interest in second base right there. He got an extended lead. 13 out of 14 stealing. Took a little jab step. He's thinking about going. Carlos Gonzalez could be a 30 30 guy this year. Two one count. Target away. That water really misses. And Suzuki had to reach as far as he could to the left side. And pretty good stop right here by Suzuki on the fastball that almost hits Kadire. Just held on to it too long, had a little cut action to it. 3 1 again to Kadire. That's the count he hit the home run on last time. Deadwater paints the outside corner, 3 2. Mercedes Benz will track it. And a good two seamer here, 91, late sink. Looked like Kadire was taken all the way. Yeah, I bet he'd like to have a belt high fastball out there again. He'll hit it up the middle and drive in another run. Gonzalez heads for third. Rockies stringing hits together. Three in this inning with a walk, and they lead 3 0. And a 335 coming into that at bat, and then a 3 2, looked like two seam fastball at 90 on the outer half, kind of pulls it back up the middle for a two out RBI, making this game 3 0. He is hitting a ridiculous 564 during his hitting streak. That's unbelievable. 31 for 55. Yeah, 21 games is impressive, but. You know, you could have a hitting streak of 21 games and be hitting in the low 300s. Yeah. Going one for three every night or, you know, one for four with a couple twofers in there. But there's nothing cheap about that 21 gamer for Kadire at all. After a visit from Steve McCaddy, Ross Detweiler needs to get Willene Rosario. Keep the Rockies within three here. I think we're pretty sure De La Rosa is not going to shut out the Nats today. So keep it as close as you can. Keep the score down. Rosario grounded out to Chris Marrero first time first base. Jump ahead 0 2 quick. See if they come in with that fastball, two strike count. Turns one over. Suzuki, a good block with the runner at third. will drop in center off speed pitch hanging up reachable for Rosario for nothing well he can't get it get much further than this I mean it's two days in a row the Nats have been playing uphill and as an offense when you have to play consistently from behind a three run lead a four run lead starts to look like a ten run lead and Ross Detweiler trying to get out of this third inning. Yeah, the big strong Rockies, four singles here. Jordan Pacheco, the eighth man to bat in the inning. He went up and took a healthy hat.
Ryan McCann has homered and the Braves have four in the first at Milwaukee. Nats down by four here. Detweiler needs to get the guys back in the dugout with the top of the order due up. 25 pitches first two innings 27 here in the third. Crowd eager for a third out. Jammed in nicely. Marrero. Inning over finally after eight batters and four score. Coburness leading off third inning. Nats have the top of the order and just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game brought to you by Miller Light. Coburnus Rendon Zimmerman or hey De La Rosa first two innings two walks two hits an air has been made behind him 27 pitches 17 strikes in both innings the Nats have needed a two out hit haven't been able to get it just yet. Coburn has walked on four pitches in the first inning. De La Rosa starting to find the zone now. Got his first strikeout on that breaking ball to Detweiler, ending the second. Career ERA 4.78. Against the Nats, 4.84 in six previous starts. Going back to his days in Milwaukee. That's a good take. Coburn is committed, able to stop on a nasty breaking pitch. I've seen him do that a few times this year. Check swing, hold up. Not easy to do. He's been on base three times against this pitcher in four plate appearances. That one will be popped up into short right center. And a rushing on Kadire. He had room to spare to grab that one for the first out. Well, you just like to see the Nats with an answer here, no matter what it is. If you're a Nats fan, Davey Johnson, love to see a crooked number up there. Anything to answer that three spot in the top of the third. Doesn't have to be three, doesn't have to be four. Just get some base runners on.
Nats have scored in this series one run in their last 12 innings. Desmond's homer that won the game was in the seventh on Friday night. Zimmerman homered in the ninth inning yesterday. So things have been a little quiet after about a game and a half of pretty good offense on Thursday and Friday. And Rendon, look at that one off the end of the bat. Fowler broke back actually before coming in. Two quick outs. Zimmerman coming in. Well, yesterday, late in the game, Ryan Zimmerman not giving any at bats away. In the ninth inning, seven to nothing game. Checked in with his ninth home run of the year to make it seven to one. Talked to him after the game, and I said, hey, Good hitters don't give that bats away. I got a pitch. I just wanted to let loose and see what happened. He did <laughs> hit his ninth. He'll forever be linked to the red seats out there in left center. That's first homer in this ballpark. His walk off on opening night. 08 against Peter Moylan beat the Braves. Right out there. De La Rosa with a breaking ball. Miss low with it, 1 1. Inside the numbers with STG. And he keeps the ball in the park. He's only given up five home runs this year. And he's one out away from completing 90 innings. Don't forget, he pitches half of his games at Coors Field. Yeah, how about Some that? Impressive. And the late movement. Has resulted in some fly balls today. They look pretty good off the bat, and they just didn't go anywhere. Rendon twice and Coburnus in this inning. Zimmerman, right center. That one's not going that far. In the gap, easy play. Fowler and Jorge De La Rosa has it going on now through three. On coming 21 game hitting streak. De La Rosa has been good so far through 37 pitches. And Ross Detweiler giving up three runs on 54 pitches, three strikeouts, and no walks. Follow the Nationals on a Seller Express now with 16 daily departures between D.C. and New York. And here's a daily departure for you Michael Kadire with a home run to extend his hitting streak to 21 games and then a base hit up the middle. So two for two for Michael Kadire. Absolutely on a fire right now. Mm. You can book him now at Amtrak.com. <laughs> they get to New York pretty quickly. Actually, the Rockies are going from here to Boston. They have an off day tomorrow, so they wanted to play today. They were hopeful when they got up today that the rain would stop. They're just starting to play a bunch of interleague games. They've had a hard, really hard problem with interleague baseball so far. They. 
Just came from Toronto. Blue Jays red hot. Now they go to Boston. Colorado's three and ten in postseason play. And I remember one year when interleague play cost the Phillies an Eastern Division championship when the Mets won. Charlie Manuel was talking about that. We couldn't win any American League games. And you would think the Rockies with their lineup would be pretty strong against some of those slugging ball clubs. It's a good baseball man right there, Walt Weiss. There are some guys you can tell FP when they're players. They're going to be a manager someday. He's, uh, he's one of those. Absolutely. And the one thing that concerned you about Jorge De La Rosa coming into today, even though the Nats kind of handled him in Colorado, was what he did against the Blue Jays in that hitter's ballpark, yeah. against that team that's playing so well, and against that lineup with nine hitters in the DH. Seven innings, one hit, had a no hitter through five and a third, and he's kind of continuing what he did in Toronto here today so far. Oh, my, that ball is hit a long way by Arenado, and it's 5 nothing. Rockies with their second leadoff homer today. Kadir in the second. Arenado in the fourth. And that'll be his seventh. And the Rockies are on a march toward 100 home runs here. 96 now. Well, they're doing it at home, but they're also doing it on the road. 92 miles an hour on the inner half. Left it out over the plate. And there was no doubt about it once he made contact. That's a number seven hitter. Here's Rutledge, and he singled first time, leading to their three run rally last inning. Ross Detweiler's given up two homers today. He'd only given up three all year in nearly 57 innings. Ian Desmond to his left for that two hopper. Close. Rutledge hustling. One out. Thompson Square. We'll be here in a couple of weeks after the Saturday, July 6, 4 o'clock game against the Pirates. Nats Live, free post-game concert series, second installment. Game tickets start at $10, nationals.com slash Nats Live. Some restrictions apply. You must have a valid game ticket for July 6th to enjoy the music. High chopper. All Rendon can do is wait. Couldn't get him. De La Rosa, the pitcher, with a base hit, his second of the year. I think Anthony Rendon thought he had a little more time on this because it was De La Rosa. Kind of sat back on it, charged it slowly. And that's when the more he plays second, he'll realize he's got to come get that baseball. Even though the pitcher's running, I think maybe he thought he had some more time than he did. De La Rosa smelling the hit. Hustles down the line for an infield single. The leadoff man Dexter Fowler bats for the third time in four innings. 84 high in the zone. Ball is over the reach of Rendon, and the hits keep on coming for the Rockies. And Davy Johnson's going to have to get something going in the bullpen. They are stirring in right field, and Jim Letts walking over to the phone. Craig Stammen up. Well, I think with Ross Detweiler, I mean, the league knows he throws a lot of fastballs. It's going to have to come down sometime this season to his secondary pitches where he develops the curveball, develops the changeup, and he can mix them in at any time. But big league hitters, and we talked about it early in this season, if they know a heater's coming, I mean, it's going to have to be some kind of heater with some kind of movement on it to get it by, guys. And you know, Ross did that his first five or six starts of the year, but maybe coming off the DL, not as strong as he was. But if you look at his velocity early in this game, Garp, he was throwing 94, 95, touch 96 once. Yeah. So velocity's back. I just feel like, you know, as, as a former hitter, you got to keep me guessing up there a little bit. Sure. Timing. And the Rockies are doing this with Carlos Gonzalez one for 15 in this series.
I mean, tell the Rockies about injuries. Troy Tulowitzki has been out of their lineup for a week and a half. Their leadoff man is playing and hitting hurt. That's a busted bat. And it's going to fall in front of Jason Worth. De La Rosa will hold it third. Herrera will cut it. Almost tried to get it on to Rendon for the base hit. So the bases are loaded for Michael Kadir. Who in baseball would any manager want up in this situation more than this fellow? Two for two today. 21 game hitting streak. Two RBIs in this game and three in the series. So does that make LeMahieu seven for 12 in this series? Likes the bases loaded, does he? Here comes the skipper, and that's going to do it for Ross Detweiler. Yeah, he wants the right-hander. Ross Detweiler is going to go three and a third, and that will be his second shortest outing of the year. He lasted three innings, giving up two runs on six hits at Dodger Stadium May 15th when he couldn't cover first base and had to be taken out of the game. This call to the bullpen, packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. A big crowd, really quiet right now. By Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. Rockies five, Nationals nothing, and they are trying to take this game and rip it wide open. Hey, for those of you who always come in through the center field gates, it's what the other part, part of the ballpark looks like. A lot of folks never get to see the beautiful behind home plate view of our ballpark's exterior. It's very nice. Here's Craig Stam in 22nd game. 287 ERA. 252 average against. Righty's hitting 231. Lefty's 281. Two seam fastball. Slider curve change from Stammen. Who makes his first appearance in this series? Michael Kadire against Craig Stammen. Career 0 for 2. Bases loaded, two outs. Gets the inside corner call. with another fastball there. So Craig has things set up for his good slider. 
It's a good number right there, seven of 11. Stranding other people's earnings. Well, he's gonna inherit three more right here. Make a lot of friends on the staff doing that. And he jammed him with a fastball, broken bat, two runs will score. Runner at third, cut off, runner at second, out. Seven, six, four on that put out, but the Rockies now lead seven, nothing. moment ago where's Teddy Abe George Bill well, Tom Te Teddy was at the gala last night so he's probably not even here I think he you see him I think he's going to show up really what's he got here oh there he is his version of a bowling ball and a strike and Screech does not disqualify him as he has many times in the past but points to Teddy for the W Boy, you just saw Teddy last night at the gate with that huge head crushing the spread, just slamming his face into the table, food everywhere. It was amazing. They auctioned off the jersey he wore last year when he won his first ever race, and reportedly a family of four bought it and all fit inside. Nice. We're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jorge De La Rosa, 37 pitches, 24 strikes. Worth Desmond Marrero. Well, it's no longer early in the game because of the score. Time to at least get something on the board and sustain that for a couple of innings against a hot pitcher suddenly. De La Rosa has retired seven of his last eight around the Lombardozzi bunt base hit. Counts even, 1-1. One, one. You know, a long way to go in this baseball game, and the Nats offense trying to put something together to get back in this, but just thinking back to the last couple of years, I don't remember the Nats losing by such a big margin as they have so far this year in a few games. It seems like it's happened a lot. The big losses. Yeah. And losing's one thing, but when you start losing six, seven, eight to nothing, and that's cause for a little concern, I would think, for Davey Johnson. Well, Dan Heron's first start was a 15-0 loss at Cincinnati. The Braves beat the Nats on a day when Gio was pitching 9-0 here at home. Those are the two that really kind of jump out at you. There was an 8-0 loss at San Francisco. I mean, those things will happen throughout the course of a season here or there, but... You know, just off the top of my head, I feel like it's happened a little bit more in 2013. Yeah, and there was a 10 to 1 loss to the Mets. 2 2 pitch. Worth takes a nasty breaking ball just off the plate. De La Rosa wants an appeal. Joe West says no swing.
Three two to Worth, who singled the first time up. Reaches out and he's two for two. Let's see if Jason takes a turn. He's not going to push that thing. Don't blame him. Down by seven. Well, you hope he's okay. Yeah, he just really slowed it down, pretty much shut it down on the way to the bag. He got to first. Kind of flexed his left leg. Let's see if he does anything with the extension on the swing to his hamstring. Second knock of the day for Jason Worth. This time a nice piece of hitting down the right field line. Look at the extension right here. and Let's watch him run to first. And then after he hits the bag, kind of stretched out that hamstring. But he remember he was sick yesterday, so you don't know what's going on. But I did see him stretch his leg. Here's Desmond. Okay, somebody's in line. You got a batter waiting to get in line. Nats need to string some hits together here. And suddenly you see some right handed batters trying to go the other way. Inside the numbers with Dodge on Ian Desmond against lefties this month. Crazy numbers. Two home runs in Philadelphia and here. Now he's stretching his leg between pitches right there. He felt something. Still trying to keep it loose in his lead. And he's not even taking a secondary lead at first base right now. He's just getting out there, set, not even shuffling. He's not feeling good. Tony Tarasco looking at the dugout. I think they're trying to decide whether trainer's going to come out right now and look at Jason Worth. And here comes Roger Bernardina. Oh boy, Jason Worth out of the game. Yeah, he's just going back to the bag, feeling a little something, and then you see the sign right there. Pointed to his left leg, said, I'm done. So Jason Worth back in the lineup today, two for two, shutting it down, and we'll let you know something if we do. Way inside to Desmond, two balls, two strikes. He has a good shot. He pointed to his left leg, and then he said, I'm done. Gave the sign to the dugout. So you just hope it's not that hamstring again. Desmond rips it. Fair ball. It'll hit the short corner and die. And runners will end up with nobody out at second and third. So for Ian Desmond, another double. His 19th of the year. 33 extra base hits now. Well, a couple of base hits in a row here, staying on the changeup from De La Rosa, riding it down the left field line, hit off the corner. Everyone getting out of the way. Nice job. Bernardina easily into third base. So Nats in business here in the fourth, second, and third. Nobody out. And a big spot now for Chris Morero hunting that first base hit. First pitch grounder to second today. That was leading off the second. This Marrero, by the way, in 31 games two years ago. Hit 248 for the Nets. He'll drive in a run with a bouncer to the right side that'll move both runners forward. And the Nationals are on the board. Chris Marrero's first RBI this year, the 11th of his career. Productive out. Yeah, get him over, get him in. You know, not the ideal out in this situation, but a good at bat for Marrero. First run across for the Nats today. Moves Desmond to third base and sets him up for Kurt Suzuki. Trying to make it a five run game. Yeah, I got to get this run in here. And 
that ball ripped to right center. Suzuki got a big piece of that one, and here comes Desmond. So the Nats do put a crooked number up there. Kurt Suzuki with his 14th RBI. Good swing, good at bat, scores the run. Another line out for Kurt Suzuki. What new? But he'll take it because it's a sack fly RBI, and it got his ball club within five. Good swing, good extension, low line drive. Dexter Fowler cruising for this one. He and Desmond back to the bag scores easily to make this a five run game. Uh, knew he hit it hard. Consolation prize, the run driven in. That's okay. Here's Lombardosi. Craig Stammen is on deck. Bunted for a base hit first time up. Nissan will track it. Lombardozzi last time in a two out situation laid down a bunt to turn the lineup over and wow. a tough pitch goes the Rockies way. That's nowhere near any strike that Rob Drake has given today. Lombardozzi doesn't let it bug him. Three hits in the inning. Steve is two for two. And Craig Stammen will bat with two outs because he needs to stay in for a while and pitch. He has 10 career RBIs. Oh, for three this year. But Craig Stammen can swing the bat. Yeah, Davey Johnson needing some innings out of Craig Stammen. So the part of the lineup where he really can't double switch with Ryan Zimmer making the last out of the third. Goes with his pitcher. And like he said, he can hit. Good swing. 16 hits and 80 career at bats. Six doubles. I've seen this man swing a golf club and it's something to behold. Well, that's on a tee. I know. This is moving 90. But he can hit. And a breaking ball will neutralize any hitter. 0 2. Staying alive here with two outs. It's the most hits the Nats have had in an inning since Thursday night when they put five on the board against the Rockies. Jeff Coburnus has walked and flight out. And Stammen will. Level off and slice it straight back. Yeah, making him fire some bullets. Sun shining brightly on what was a very dreary day this morning. Nationals Park and a big crowd trying to come alive and get their ball club back in this thing. Trailed 7 0. It's now 7 2. And De La Rosa almost threw it away. Willine Rosario, nice stop. I put a good at bat on him right now. Talked about it yesterday a lot. A good at bat doesn't always result in a hit. It's making the other guy work, going deep into account, fouling off some pitches, fighting up there. And right now, Craig Stammen's doing just that. Nasty breaking ball strikes him out. Three hits, a couple of runs. Are the Nats back in it? Fifth inning coming up, a long way to go.
7-2. Ball game in his hands now. And Roger Bernardino will stay in the game after pinch running for the injured Jason Worth and now playing right field. Or hopefully only the irritated Jason Worth who didn't feel good getting to first base. Look like he's uh, it's his groin. looking at the groin muscle there, huh? Yeah. So it was his right hamstring, but he's... Looks like his left groin is hurting him. Pointed at it, said, I'm done. Feels a little something in there. So sick yesterday. I don't know if he's dehydrated from being sick, but Jason Worth looks like he's got a groin to go with his hamstring, and that, folks, is not good. Bernardina checking the sun. Going through his checklist, all the things you're supposed to look at when you get out there. Top of the fifth inning, Willin Rosario, one for two with an RBI hit. And he'll swing and miss there. Rosario against Stammen, 0 for 2 career. Checks in with a base hit now. And the Rockies are just being a bit relentless here. Last three innings, really only two innings plus one hitter. Ten base hits since Rutledge led off the third with a hit. Next up will be Jordan Pacheco. He's got to get these guys stopped, put a couple of zeros on the board and give the offense a chance. You score a couple runs, get your ball club back in the dugout quick, keep that momentum on your side. Pretty good heavy sinker there. I thought he might go 0 2 breaking ball to Kadair. He buried a fastball in on Michael's hands. That's how good Kadair's going. He was able to muscle that ball in the left field. It's a big two runs the Rockies got at the tail end of that fourth inning. 1-1 one, one pitch. A little low. When guys are locked in like that, I mean, there's not a whole lot you could do other than, you know, execute a game plan to a T. If you miss your spot by a couple inches to a good hitter who's in the middle of a 21-game hitting streak, you're going to pay the price. It's that simple. you got to do everything absolutely perfect yeah. to get guys like that out that are that hot. Game's moving real slow for Michael Kadire. 2 1, runner goes in a foul. Three stolen bases for Rosario this year. He is looking for four. Vote online for the Nats to go to the All Star game, nationals.com slash votes. 84th MLB game at City Field, July 16th. Vote early, vote often, vote Nats. Two two runner holding line drive right at Desmond. He'll take a shot and it should be out. It is Ian Desmond with a rocket for a six three double play. Well usually with Craig Stammen the, the double play you're thinking about is that two seam fastball in a six four three but right here Jordan Pacheco hits it hard right at Ian Desmond uses that strong arm bad read by Rosario at first base. You know, let's talk about it. Everyone says freeze on a line drive. It's, it's never freeze on a line drive. If you do that, it's too late. It's back on a line drive. Mm -hmm. So when you see a low line drive in the infield, you go back to the base. You just shudder when you hear little league coaches say, hey, freeze on a line. No, no, no. Back on a line drive. You see it go back. Yeah, you can always restart it. The ball gets through. 0-1 with two outs and a base hit. Nolan Arenado two for two, uh, two for three after homering last time. And the Rockies have 12 hits. Davey just waiting for it to stop. 
Get a chance to manage a ball game. Nets do have the top of the order due up in the fifth. Josh Rutledge one for two. He's pulled it twice. And Craig Stemmen throws it right in there. Outfield around to the right. And a ball pulled to left. Lombardosi, long run, edge of the track, and he's there. Nice play. Handling himself beautifully out there these days. Two hits, the double play help. Here come the Nets. Honor our troops and our wounded warriors. Today, it's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. At DynCorp, we serve today for a better tomorrow. Rocky 7, Nats 2, bottom of the fifth coming up, top of the order. June 23rd of 2013. Springtoberfest going on from Volkswagen right now with a moment in history. Visit VWDealer.com. Babe Ruth started a game in 1917. He was barking at umpire Brick Owens after each pitch as he walked leadoff man Eddie Foster. On ball four, the Babe punched out the umpire. Ejected from the game, of course. Listen to this. Ernie Shore comes in. The runners caught stealing. Eddie Shore comes in. Runner caught stealing. He retires the next 26 men and gets a credit for a perfect game. Eddie Shore, old-time hockey, eh? No, this was a baseball oh. Eddie Shore. Eddie Shore would have punched everybody out, the old hockey player. He was tougher than Babe Ruth. <laughs> Coburn is grounds out. I heard a story about Eddie Shore when he was a hockey coach. He used to tie his goaltender's arms to the pipes for slap shot practice. Learn how to use your body, big boy. Oh, that may be the best sports movie ever, by the way, Slapshot. One yep. of my favorites. Oh, boy. How about Babe Ruth, though? Ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four. I think I'll punch out the umpire. Come on, Babe. I'm sure a lot of guys have wanted to do that throughout time. Well, I say throw a strike before you punch him out. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get the call, then you can think about your next course of action. Anthony Rondona's flight out twice to center field. De La Rosa, by the way, threw four innings, 60 pitches, 40 strikes. Nats made him throw 23 last inning. But for the second straight time, he is poised to deep, uh, to deep pitch into a game. That ball pulled by Rendon just outside the bag. Make a play. Nice.
2 1. Fastball nasty under the hands. Strike two. Rob Drake wasn't giving that pitch early in the game, but he's adjusting to what De La Rosa is doing. Rendon, he tried to jam him again. That one was upstairs, though, three and two. And right now, with Ryan Zimmerman on deck and then Roger Bernardino, the Nationals will take base runners any way they can get them. De La Rosa walked two of the first three batters today. Good command since then. Rendon pulls one to the wall and left. That'll one hop and be another extra base hit for him. He'll check in at second base. Anthony Rendon, 29th major league hit, and nine of them are doubles. Well, that might answer your question about how he's going to handle the inside heater. And the majority of Rendon's hits have been the other way. Up the middle, right center field, but watch him pull the hands inside this baseball. A fastball in the inner half. And power it down the left field line. So check that box, anybody that's watching. Hmm. On base now, 20 of the last 21 games. And a big spot for Ryan Zimmerman to swing the Nats back into this. He's walked and flied to center. Ryan's hit a home run off De La Rosa career, four RBIs. Who continues, De La Rosa does, to pound the right handed batters in. And Rendon has handled the fastball away. He's handled any kind of off speed pitch. IDs it quick, whether it's a strike or not. And we haven't seen him really be tested on the inner half on a consistent basis, but right there, tested on the inner half, passes that test too. You got a quick bat like that. I, I just don't think there's a whole lot of holes in that swing with the foot down early, the head still. The tremendous bat speed late. Hands in the zone quick, stays through it so nice, so relaxed. Good rhythm in the swing. There's not a whole lot wrong with it at all. Two balls, no strikes. Now, this is a tricky situation. Without Jason Worth on deck, it's a 3 0 count. You're down by five. I feel like the green light might be in order right here, even though you're down by five. Go quick strike. Zimmerman taking all the way to on one out. De La Rosa walks him for the second time. And a big spot now for Roger Bernardina came in as a pinch runner. First at bat. And the Rockies pitching coach Jim Wright on his way. It's way better than those defense signs you see in football. You see the shark teeth right there? It's nice. See, to me, this is where Roger has to think like a leadoff hitter. You know, you're down by five runs right here. You have the red hottie and Desmond on deck. So even though there's two guys on, left on left, if you walk up there with leadoff hitter mentality, meaning I'm going to try to get on base any way I can. It's not about me getting a hit. It's about me getting on base for Ian Desmond possibly making this a seven to six game with one swing. That's the mindset you have to have right now if you're Roger Bernardina. Get on base. A bunt is even in play right here with a runner in scoring position. You're down by five. You need base runners with a great hitter on deck. Roger Bernardina. Two homers, four RBIs. 20 hits on the year. Lefty lefty matchup as he goes against De La Rosa here. Roger Bernardina against this pitcher. No history. First matchup. He does bunt. Bunts it hard. They'll get a force out at second. 
for the second out. So 5 4 on that. Rendon to third. Bernardina, good speed aboard. Right idea, bad execution. He bunted a little bit too hard to a guy that knows what to do when he gets the baseball. But right thought process right there from the Shark. I don't know if he's feeling good going to first. What's going on? He's walking back to the bag with a little limp going too. Yeah, it didn't hit the bag well. He was watching the throw to second for a long time, FP, before he put his sights back down on the bag. Are you reaching for his right ankle or calf? Spot in the lineup is cursed today. Well, this is the matchup you want and the guy you want the plate if you're Davy Johnson down by five. Big spot now for Ian Desmond. Nats are down by five. Way inside, 1 1. Extra base hit, number 33 last time up when Ian ripped one down the left field line. Doubles, extra base hits. He's with the elite shortstops in the game right now. Well, the way he's going with Tulowitzki injured, maybe he's the one others have to measure themselves against. He got a pitch right there. 1-1 one, one count. Got a fastball in the inner half. De La Rosa humped up to 92 right here, but he wanted this buried in, and he left it out over. Desmond with a good swing. Probably just a little bit too high. Fouled it straight back. Two-two. Two. Chris Marrero waiting RBI ground ball last time. Off speed up and away. De La Rosa taking a walk off the mound and have a little talk with himself. We've seen him do that a couple of times here today. Not happy with the way he threw the pitch. Almost looks like he's injured. He's done it two or three times. And now Roger Bernardino get a head start in a 3 2 count with two outs. Well, great speed at third. Greater speed at first if he's okay. Desmond will step out now. Desmond, deep third and foul. Fastball away, Ian strikes out. Might have been ball four, the Nats will strand a couple. They've left six. On to the sixth inning. It's 7 2, Rockies.
Southwest provides affordable dental coverage for priceless smiles, reminding you to ask your broker about Denta Quest. Oh, yeah, 21 game hitting streak. I'd be smiling too. That's right. Sixth inning. Jorge De La Rosa leads off against Craig Stammen, who's thrown 14 pitches, 12 strikes. Mid Atlantic Sports Report back tomorrow. Tom, Dave, and Mel. Recapping this series, looking to the Diamondbacks and the Mets coming up this week. That's from 5 to 6.30 tomorrow night. So we don't want you to have an off day from baseball. Masser for 90 minutes from 5 to 6.30 tomorrow. I saw those guys in the gala yesterday up in the balcony out the Shakespeare Theater. <laughs> Waiting for us to break into Hamlet, but we resisted. De La Rosa one for two. And Craig Stammen blows it by him. One ball, two strikes. Brewers haven't been able to get anything done against the Braves. It's 5 nothing Atlanta in that ball game in Milwaukee. As the Braves try to salvage one. Rockies box score. Well, we'll just talk about Michael Kadire, who's a triple away from the cycle right now. I also have a homer from Arenado leading off the fourth. So three run third, three run fourth, the difference in this game. De La Rosa with a swing, and that one got Kurt Suzuki on the foul tip. See where it got him. I think the meat hand right here on the foul tip. Watch the right hand of Kurt Suzuki. Yeah, got him on the thumb. Mm. Fastball away and the strikeout for Craig Stammen, his first. Top of the order for the Rockies now. Toyota's case for kids and that'll be four strikeouts on the day times thirty seven dollars to the children's in at the National Institutes of Health for the strikeouts thanks to our D.C. area Toyota dealers. Dexter Fowler. Strikeout walk run scored single one for two in the series he's two for eight. Make that two for ten, one for eight coming in. And a check swing. It's a called strike, it appears. Pretty good jamage right there and a ground ball to Rendo. Two outs. DJ LeMayu will be next. A good pitch right there from Stam and that little slider with the late break. And usually it's a swing and a miss pitch for him, but that time it was almost like a cutter to Dexter Fowler got in on his hands. Craig Stammen's batting spot is due up fourth in the sixth. Up there swinging, LeMayer circling behind it, waiting on Bardozzi. And a 1 2 3. First time that's happened since the first inning today.
And Mercedes-Benz of Arlington and Mercedes-Benz of Julie Alexandria. Let's check out the score. Seven to two Rockies. Michael Kadire, the hits keep on coming. Three for three, 21 game hit streak. Ross Detweiler, not his best effort. Three and two thirds, nine hits, seven earned runs on just 68 pitches. And Jason Worth missed yesterday because he was sick. Back in the lineup today with a couple of base hits. First time up, 5.5 hole. Second time up. 3-2 pitch, lines it to right field, and this is where it got adventurous, came back to the bag. Looked like something going on with his groin right there, felt it, said, you know what, I'm good, I'm out of this game. Bernardina in. So we haven't heard anything about Jason Worth, and we'll keep you posted when we find something out. As a rule, we don't find out about injuries until after the game's over, so hopefully before we get off the air with our play-by-play analyst part of the game or during that extra we'll find out Chris Marrero 0 for 2 with an RBI ground ball Ian Kroll maybe taking over in the seventh whether Stammen bats here or not as mentioned he's due up fourth Craig has put a couple of zeros up on the board after giving up that hit to Kadir but he can get in line with a whole lot of pitchers for that Only hits below the number five spot tonight. Lombardozzi going two for two. And Marrero checks in with a hot shot to left. I know it's his return to the big leagues, but he hasn't been here in two years. And that has to feel a little like his first major league hit. So Chris Marrero finally checks in. A nice swing right here. Looks like he got maybe a change up at 82 from De La Rosa. Caught it out front. Bullet on the ground. Leadoff man on here in the six for the Nats. Good swing. And then Suzuki stung the ball his last time up. Rockies getting their bullpen ready. It looks like Rob Scahill. Suzuki showed bunt because Arenado was playing so deep. He's just sick of lining out to people. He figures, well, <laughs> lay down a bun, I got a better chance. Well, it's all about base runners. It's a good idea. He's back again. Good rip. Counts even. Nationals box score. A couple of walks, a worth hit in the first. Lombardozzi bun hit in the second. And in the fourth, Worth, Desmond, and then Marrero and Suzuki, the RBIs. Couldn't play a couple of runners last inning. Leadoff man aboard here in the sixth. Good Suzuki getting healthy hacks against De La Rosa. He's one for four career with four RBIs. Three RBIs against him. Pitch number 88 coming from De La Rosa. 54 strikes, 33 balls. That's trying to put something together here in the sixth. Two-two with nobody out. And Suzuki will pop it up to right. Kadir for the first out here in the sixth. Bring your group out to Nationals Park. All types of events can be a blast. Company outings, birthday parties, family reunions, and a whole lot more. The bigger the group, the bigger the savings at nationals.com slash groups. I have a group of 25,000. Is that cool? You could have the upper deck from base to base. Nice. 
Uh, that would wouldn't that wouldn't be nearly enough. Just my really close friends and family. <laughs> yeah. If I was your credit card company, I would want cash in advance on that one. That's a wild pitch. It'll put Marrero at second base with one out. I'm sure Walt Weiss seeing what we're seeing. It looks like his lefty's getting a little bit gassed here in the sixth. Warm day. 90 pitches coming right here on this pitch. Been wobbling a little bit the last two innings, and it's understandable with the yeah, at bats they've been having and how hot it is here today. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's almost like De La Rosa is trying to let this ball club back in the game. A moment ago, Denard Span had a bat in the dugout, but Chad Tracy comes on deck. With one out here in the sixth inning. Lombardozzi to the third baseman. Wings it over to Pacheco for the second out. So Tracy will usually pinch hit with a man on base, and that's why Davey will use him relatively early here. With no righties on his bench, he has no option, right? Got to go left on left with Chad Tracy today. Ian Kroll getting hot in the Nats bullpen. Chad Tracy. Career against Jorge De La Rosa one for six. There's the bench. Can't go to your righty Solano because of the fact he's your last catcher. So Davey Johnson going to Chad Tracy in the sixth. Craig Stammen, two and a third, gets credit for scoreless relief on three hits. Did give up a base hit that allowed two runners responsible, or at least charged to Ross Deadweiler to score. But Craig did a good job of settling the ball game down to get it to this point. Rockies had been only held scoreless for one inning. He came in, put two zeros on the board after facing one batter in the fourth. And the bad part about the last two days is you really don't want to see your long guy. But the good part about the last two days is your long guy's been great. Ollendorf yesterday, Stammen today. Both gotten the job done for Davey Johnson. And it could earn Ollendorf some spot starts here now. But Dan Heron going on the DL today. Tracy will take a strike. 2-2. Two -two. Let's see where this 2 1 pitch is from De La Rosa. Down the zone. He's been down there all day long. Gets the call. Mercedes Benz on the pitch track and a 2 2 count. Tracy strikes out. Nats have been looking for two out hits all day. Haven't been able to plate those. It's 7 2 into the seventh.
Trent, it is your favorite time of every broadcast. It's time for your head and shoulders whiff. And we're going to check out Carlos Gonzalez in this series and how the Nats pitchers have handled him very well. Seven strikeouts in the series. It's been with the fastball, changeup, fastball from Strasburg right there. Drew Storm throwing the two seamer on the inner half. Ross Ohlendorf, Deadwater today. So the reigning NL player of the week has been handled, and I'm going to say up to this point. Yeah. Yeah. Good way to put it. By the Nats. Just because you don't want to be a human jinx. Yeah, don't want to wake up anybody. Ian Kroll. A lot of zeros on those seven games. A lot of low numbers. 22-year-old lefty from Hinsdale, Illinois. And part of the Michael Morse deal. And that's actually got him from Oakland completing that trade. And here's Carlos Gonzalez. Base hit last time. One for three today. Two for 16 in the series. Facing Kroll for the first time. The best thing about Ian Kroll is he just doesn't really care. Just grabs it, throws it as hard as he can. Still hasn't looked up and noticed that there's people in the stands and cameras and that he's on TV. Just kind of oblivious right now, young, going right after guys, and you love it. You love to see the enthusiasm and the challenge that he has every single batter he faces. It's fun to watch. Oakland drafted him in the seventh round back in 09. He made 47 minor league starts coming into this year. Three, four, five for the Rockies. Kadir next, and then Rosario here, top of the seventh. Nasty breaking ball for the strikeout. He just keeps on getting people out. Can Nissan trek him? Sure can. And Carlos Gonzalez, maybe the one Rocky that can't wait to get out of town today. He's had a rough series from a strikeout standpoint. We just showed that package with seven. There's number eight. Ian Kroll with a nice off-speed pitch right there to get him. Mm. Kadir facing Kroll for the first time. Yeah, that's Gonzalez in this series now. Two for 17 with eight Ks. Here it is, bro. Hit it. See what you got. 84 turn that one over. Wow. Nasty breaking stuff in the dirt. Two hitters, two K's. K's for Kroll here. No, no, not two hitters. Carlos Gonzalez and Michael Kadire. Back to back strikeouts. And you see the change up right there. Circle grip, turn it over. And this is the first time we've seen Ian Kroll with the secondary pitches be great. Wow. I wonder if you ever think about starting this guy if he develops that second and third pitch. Well, I was wondering that with a, a lot of starting experience in his minor league career. Ryan Zimmerman scoops it up. Right on target to Marrero. Seventh inning stretch here at Nationals Park. Bullpen coming up big. Hyundai brings us the seventh inning stretch. And Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. That's trying to battle their way back south of the capital.
Brought to you by Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. That's the uh, T-shirt of the weekend right there that was featured in the team store. We have a day off tomorrow right back here on Tuesday night. Trevor Cahill, 3-8 and eight with a 392 ERA this year. And he's 0-3 in June, so maybe the Nats can get some offense going against him. Gio, 1.29 ERA in his last five starts. And on the year, he's 3-3 three three with a 3.54. 6.30, Nats extra to get you going on Tuesday night. Top of the order for the Nats, our infinity do up. In fact, the top of the order has been up four times today. And against the Rockies, Jeff Coburnus, a 125 hitter. Anthony Rendon, a whole lot better. And Ryan Zimmerman doing his sh share of damage as well. De La Rosa will be relieved here. He's done. After 95 pitches and 59 strikes, and Rob Scahill will get the call. Our 12th game of the year for Scahill. You look at the numbers right there. The guy that's a three pitch pitcher, fastball slider change, fastball 94 slider, upper 80s, change up mid 80s. I gotta give the fans credit here today. They have hung tough. They've been into this ball game. And they are waiting for the team to make a comeback. But big crowd here on Bryce Hopper Bobblehead Day. And they have been into it since the beginning of this ball game, and they're waiting to cheer for something right here, right now. They're gonna let out some of their energy on the high note here in a moment as this one goes to the bottom of the seventh. The strain is growing, and we'll give you an update when we hear something. Jeff Coburnus 0 for 2 with a walk. So De La Rosa, pretty good outing today. Obviously not as dominant as he was in Toronto, but not very far off. Seven hits in six innings, couple of runs. He pitched around three walks, didn't allow them to hurt him, and struck out four. Well, top of the order, you would think with De La Rosa out, this is the ending if the Nats are going to mount a comeback right here, right now. Coburn is first career matchup with Scahill. And he'll go to right field with the ball pretty well hit, but over to grab it. Michael Kadire. Today's copyrighted broadcast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals baseball club and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Nice crowd. Thirty nine thousand three hundred seven. Nats on the four game series draw 141,938. So, an average, we'll get that in a moment. Can't do that off the top of your head. Let's go. I just did. 35,485. As an average for a four game series, it began on a Thursday night. Oh, strong weekend. Rendon double last time. Swinging on 3 and 0, oh, base hit. 
So they've tried to work him two at bats in a row now, and he has singled twice. I don't know that I've ever seen that in my 25 years in professional baseball. A guy swinging 3 0 down by five runs. But I guess when you're swinging it like Rendon is, it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't think it was 3 0. I mean, there's no way. Maybe it was a 2 1 count. The scoreboard said 3 0. There's no way he'd be swinging on 3 0. I don't think. We can go back and double check. No, that. It was 2 1. Scoreboard said 3 0. So I still haven't seen that. Good. I mean, the guy is human, and he knows the game. I don't know if he is. <laughs> Honestly, let's go over and play second like he's been playing. Throw up two knocks a day. Hitting 337 now. Zimmerman has walked twice and flied out. Facing Scahill for the first time. Fastball in there, and that's only got a three batter look at him in Colorado last week. Lombardozzi, Span, and Tracy. And that one somehow got by Ryan Zimmerman. Fastball up and in. He was getting out of dodge, and I can't believe it didn't hit him. I'm glad it didn't. And this doesn't feel good, by the way, even if it doesn't hit you getting out of the way this quick like that for Ryan Zimmerman. He was stretching out after this, and look at him bracing for impact right there. That was a two seamer up around the shoulders. That'll definitely wake you up. Mm. But he is still trying to stretch out after that. I heard a sound initially and thought maybe it got Ryan, but that was off the glove of Rosario, who had no chance to catch it. So the count goes to two and one. Rosario now returning from his visit to the mound. Josh Outman, lefty, getting ready. Ball three. They've walked Ryan Zimmerman in this series three times. Roger Bernardino waiting. That was a big time three and one rip. I got a pitch, fouled it straight back. A little hair on it at 96. Zimmerman to right center. Ball got in on his hands. Hit it a pretty good ways for getting jammed, and Fowler runs it down two outs. Roger Bernardino now with a runner at second base. Well, base hit right here gets you within one swing range if you can load the bases in the eighth. So, hey, this is a big at bat. Make a 7 3 ball game down by four going to the eighth. Nets haven't had a hit with the runner in scoring position today. Two RBIs on a grounder and a sack fly. Strike to Bernardina. I think if Rosario catches that pitch right there, it's strike two. I 
don't think he's asking Rob Drake that. Hey, if I catch that, is that a strike? Umpires want you to present that thing as a strike. You drop it, you lose calls. Target in. Hit to left. Rendon will be held by Trent Jewett. Carlos Gonzalez leads the league in outfield assists with nine. So don't run yourself out of an inning when you're still down big. It'll be first and third, two outs. Nice battle right there by the Shark at a two strike count. Goes the other way. The two seam fastball out over. Lines it to left. Good hold by Jewett. Gonzalez with the big arm you're talking about. Ball hit too hard to send him. And he falls to Ian Desmond. That's an ad's first hit today with a runner in scoring position, sending Rendon to third. Ian Desmond, one for three with a double. Run scored back in the fourth. He was up in a situation like this two innings ago. And De La Rosa was able to strike him out. He faces Scahill for the first time and greets him with a fly ball out of play right side. Slider right here at 88. It's down. See, that's where pitch track doesn't come into play on a low pitch. You see a catcher's glove hit the dirt. It's not a strike. And a 1 1. Missing away. Ball two. Nats have had nine hits today. They're just looking for two out lightning in this game. That's ball three. We talked about the last couple of days. Ian Desmond in a count. That home run he hit the other night was in a 2-0 count to right center field. And usually his at-bats don't last long enough to get into a count. A lot easier to hit like this. Bernardino running. Ball four, bases loaded. That's the fourth walk issued by the Rockies today. The Nats haven't been able to make any of them hurt. Chris Marrero has been swinging early in the count today as he comes out to hit. Jim Wright came out of the dugout and then went back. Well, this is the chess match right now. Obman's ready for Adam LaRoche. And that's why Walt Weiss has a lefty up in the bullpen. So if Davy Johnson goes to LaRoche right here, it would be Outman versus LaRoche. So your decision as a manager, do you want right on right or do you want left on left? Chris Marrero busted into the hit column last time up with a hot shot to left. That might have been one of those unintentional intentionals to Desmond. Be careful with him. Got a younger player on deck. Marrero, 10 home runs at Syracuse this year. But he pops the first one up to right field. He has swung at the first pitch three times today. And that's it for the Nats in the seventh. They have stranded 10 base runners trailing 7-2.
It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. You talk about filling up the strike zone. So all you need to do is look at Ian Kroll. A couple of strikeouts in his inning. Carlos Gonzalez, Michael Kadire. And he got a ground out right there to end the inning. But we're going after the big boys, getting ahead in the count, getting the job done once again, and he is still on the mound. Ten pitches, seven strikes. In the seventh when he struck out Gonzalez Kadire and grounded out Rosario. So the Nats bullpen in the month of June just taking a rough start, turning it into a pretty good May and into a really good third month of the season. Brought to you by Dodge as we go inside the numbers. Well, Pacheco, Arenado, and Rutledge, eighth inning. The two lefties down there, a big reason. Abad and Kroll. Right handers not looking much better than the lefties right now. The way he's throwing. Matt Belisle pitched a scoreless eighth. One, two, three here last night with ground balls. Rockies are trying to gain a split in the series after the Nats had two nice wins to start things off. Going 5 1 Thursday, 2 1 Friday. Wins by Zimmerman and Strasburg, but the back end of the rotation not able to get it done against the Rockies the last two days. Fastball right in there, and Kroll will strike out Pacheco looking. Four in a row, three on K's. Yeah, four batters face, three punch outs for Kroll. This one fastball in the inner half, 93 miles an hour. Grip it and rip it. Hit your spot. Good day for Nolan Arenado. Homered leading off the fourth. Base hit, two outs in the fifth. Goes up hacking and a pop up right side. Marrero will be called off by Rendon. Anthony picking things up quickly there at second base, like getting the angle on those pop ups. And wearing sunglasses. Ah, it does have the shades on today. Said a couple of weeks ago when he had those problems, he didn't like wearing them. Somebody told him, learn to like them. I didn't like hitting eighth either, but I did it. <laughs> I don't like 3 a.m. bus rides, but that's what we do. Here's Josh Rutledge, one for three. Good fastball in there, one one. Not a bad work work rate either. He's a he's a reliever, and this probably goes back to his starting days. Nobody on base. He pitches off the windup. He's not one of those all the time off the stretch guys. He's at the extreme third base end of that pitching rubber. Creates a good angle for him for the right-handed batters to the outside, and he paints it right there. How good has he been? Are you kidding me? I would say really, really good. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. 22 years of age, Ian Kroll. Impressive.
Time for some Cholula hot sauce. The hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. Available original flavor, chili lime, chili garlic, and I'm going to call this one right here Chipotle. 95 on the black for strike three looking. Mm-mm-mm. He and Cole with some serious hot sauce today. This one on to the bottom of the eighth. Tyler Colvin will come in, bat ninth on a double switch and play left field for the Rockies. So he'll lead off in the ninth. That'll clear things for Matt Belisle to come in. He was pretty efficient last night with a one, two, three, eighth on three ground balls. And he'll take over to take on Suzuki, Lombardozzi, and then a pinch hitter for Ian Kroll. That is, unless Kroll can hit like he pitches. Then he can hit anywhere he wants. Fastball slider, curveball change for Belial. Doesn't throw the change up too often. So pretty much a three pitch guy. Fastball slider curve. Kurt Suzuki off to the right side. Bottom of the eighth underway. Kurt is 0 for 1 career against Matt Belisle. Nice day for Steve Lombardozzi. Two for three. A bunt hit, clean single up the middle. And the 0 2 to Suzuki, who's 0 for 2 with a sack fly. Breaking ball, got it. MLB.com at bat, number one source for live baseball everywhere. On your iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Nats action, live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, and highlights. Text at bat to 31826 or log on to nationals.com. Strike two, Lombardozzi. Did Art Span got a day off against the left hander today? He will come into pinch hit here in a moment. Lombardozzi chops one off the plate, and he will get a base hit from that. And a three for four day. Two of them on the infield. That's good clean living right there. Chopper off the plate. And you think if Belial catches this, he's got a chance to get him at first. And you could make the argument that Belial lost that ground ball in the sun. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. But watch the chop off the plate. Look where his shadow is. So the sun. Maybe right behind him. No, I didn't lose that in the sun. Had his back to it. Just didn't make the play. Third hit of the day for Lombardozzi. Stay hot. Yeah, that's big for him. That's good hitting in the number eight spot. Denard Span this year is 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. Overall, he's hitting 255 with 18 RBIs. 0 for 2 career against Matt Belisle. Top of the order with Coburnus next. And that's off the glove of Pacheco. Lombardozzi will scamper to third base. And Denard Span checks in with his first pinch hit of the year. Honorary member of the goon squad with that one, huh? Yeah. This pinch hitting thing is easy, says Denard Span. Just got a little fastball right down the middle. A little cut to it. Pulled the hands in. Shoots it into right field. Lombardozzi all the way to third. Good at bat, Denard Span. Runners at the corners for Coburnus. Denard Span is a pinch hitter career now. Five out of eight. Well, that's how you get benched. You better be careful. <laughs> Top of the order here is Coburnus. Nobody's benching him. Jeff is 0 for 3 with a walk. And here comes another situation where the Nats. I mean, this ball game is a couple of two out hits away from being a slugfest. Because the Rockies have 12 hits, the Nationals 11. But the score is 7 to 2. 
Rockies pitchers have been able to get those third outs. In this case, they're looking for second and third outs. One hit with a runner in scoring position, and the odd thing about that was it didn't drive in a run. That was Bernardina's single last inning that Rendon had to stop it on third because it was sharply to Gonzalez and left. Cobernus takes one low, 2 1. And by the way, the Brewers have picked up four runs against the Braves. That's a 6 4 game in Milwaukee in the sixth inning. Strike two. 2 1 slider. And that thing ended up way outside. Anthony Rendon waiting. He's had one at bat against Belial and walked. 2 2 pitch, and it goes full. Three two Corbinus takes the walk and the bases are loaded for the second inning in a row. The Rockies are trying to let the Nats back into this ball game. That's five walks on the day. The Rockies have given Washington. Somebody's got to make them pay. Well this is. The proverbial right man in the right spot for the Nats. Never been able to get the tying run into the batter's box yet, but it's in the on deck circle. As Ron st Rendon steps in, Zimmerman on deck here in the eighth. Anthony, two for four today, seven for 16 in this series. Slider for a strike. It's all right. You don't want that early in the count. It's not what you're looking for. He took a grand slam swing. No balls, two strikes. Well, he got a pitch 93 right down the middle. And now he's got a battle. Lombardozzi, Span, Coburnus, great speed on the bases. Yeah, right down the middle. Ooh. I think you called it. He was trying to go deep. Good idea on that breaking pitch. He got jammed and fought one off. Pretty nasty one two pitch from Matt Belisle. Well if he ends up doing something this at bat you're going to go right back to that pitch right there. Fastball in his hands borderline pitch emergency hack to stay alive from Rendon. This is what good hitters do. They foul off borderline pitches by himself another chance. He struck out on a pitch well outside two down. Belisle second strikeout to go with a walk in two hits in this inning. It'll be up to Ryan Zimmerman. You know, we're going to show you the sequence right here between Belisle and Rendon. The second pitch was it. So high strike right there, but watch that. That's the pitch when you have bases loaded that you have to connect with. Easier said than done. Fouls it back, and now you got to fight. Yeah, slider on the outer half, and let's see. Did he go? Yes. Still would have liked to have seen appeal right there. You never know, right? Ryan Zimmerman, four for 12 career against Belial. Homered late in the game last night. Actually, yesterday afternoon. And today, 0 for 2 with two walks.
Up the middle. Shortstop. Boots it. The balls keep keeps rolling into right, and two runs will score. Josh Rutledge got to it. This is a 7-4 ball game. Game on. And it's got to be scored a base hit, and then an error as guys advance. I don't think Rutledge had a chance to get Zimmerman at first base. That's how they've scored it. So the big hit they've been waiting for today with the bases loaded. Ryan Zimmerman gets inside a two-seam fastball that was chasing him. And Josh Rutledge looked way out of control on that ball. He's going full speed for it, hits the heel, then hits his foot. So that is the definition of a boot right there by Josh Rutledge. And a huge spot for Roger Bernardino now. He's the tying run. Coburn is at third. Zimmerman at first. Ryan checks in with his third RBI of this series. You know, there's no moral victories in baseball. It's all about the big W, whether you win or lose. But we've talked about it a lot lately, the fight that this ball club has had late. You look at the fourth inning, the seventh inning, this inning. This wouldn't have happened a month ago. And now they're fighting, they're battling, they're scrapping, trying to get back into this game. I think Walt Weiss is going to his lefty. Rex Brothers is their closer right now. And the Nats really don't have any right-handed bats to go to unless David would, Davey would make the radical move of using his backup catcher, Jonathan Solano. So, with two outs here, Matt Belial is done. The Nats are fighting to try to get back even. Two, it's now 7-4. And by the way, we need to tell you, right after you say hello to us again, Davey is going to go to Jonathan Solano here to get that one right-handed bat in there. But this ball club is battling, and they've got a chance here. Well, it's like the Rockies are trying to let him back in this game, but they're also getting back in this game by putting some good at-bats together. So now it's up to Jonathan Solano against Brothers to get on base, not necessarily drive in some runs, because nobody up in the Rockies' bullpen mm -hmm. for Ian Desmond. And you, if you were Davey Johnson, would love to see Ian Desmond versus Brothers, and then whatever happens with this game happens. Well, the Nats battling back. They've had double-digit hits today. In fact, uh, those hits up on the board, the most they've had in this series. So they're starting to get something here late in these innings from the standpoint of hits with runners in scoring position. So Rex Brothers, the left-hander. Just want to get this game to Ian Desmond any way he can. Jonathan Solano. 0 for 4 is a pinch hitter. And he goes to left center. That'll score a run. 
Zimmerman heading for third. Trent Jewett will send him. This is a one-run game. The onion coming through big time for the Nats. A first pitch right out over the plate. Not waiting around for anything. And I think it was a slider off speed from Brothers. Caught it out front. Split the gap. Ryan Zimmerman hustling from first base. Trent Jewett saying, I'm going to score you. And all of a sudden, this is a 7-6 game. With Ian Desmond at the plate. And the tying run is in scoring position. Jonathan Solano checks in with his first two RBIs of the year. Boy, he just wanted to get Desmond to the plate, but you got the bonus plan with a double and two RBIs from Solano. And this crowd is on their feet, and it's rocking. Ian Desmond 0 for 1 career against Rex Brothers. And he was swinging to tie it or put the Nats ahead. And if your friends have turned the channel or gone out to barbecue, call them, text them, tell them game on. This crowd's been waiting all day for this. Great move by Davey Johnson putting Solano in there. Strike two. Desmond didn't like it. Rex Brothers running one evidently to the outside corner. We'll track it. Yeah, it didn't look like a strike, but now Ian Desmond's got to refocus because he's got a big pitch coming. Yeah, got the benefit of a call right there, but still got to throw one over the plate. Well, Lombardozzi had a call like that a couple of innings ago and singled on the next pitch. 0-2. Desmond had to swing. It was close enough. He strikes out. The Nats, a four-run eighth inning, 7-6 into the ninth. Them here in the ninth, and then take a shot with six, seven, and eight due up in the bottom of the inning. Get the latest Nationals news the moment it happens. Delivered direct from Masson to your mobile phone. Just text Nationals to 29292. Jeff Coburnus will move to right field here in the top of the ninth inning. And Denard Spann, who pinch hit and got a base hit, will come in and play center. Taking over on the mound will be Fernando Abad. My 15th appearance of the year. You see the ERA at 154. Lefty's hitting just 
Well, lefty's hitting 316. Righties are the ones that he's had success with. Fernando Abad struck out Tyler Colvin in the ninth inning last night at the tail end of a lopsided game. So it's his second appearance of the sea of the uh, series. He gave up a double to Dexter Fowler who he will face next. So Colvin 0 for 3 career against him. Tyler Colvin into play left field on a double switch. Last inning. Could you make the argument that Ian Kroll turned the momentum of this game around? Yeah, I think Craig Stammen kind of stopped the Rockies, uh, you know, slowed him down, and then Kroll just put two innings. Got his guys back in the dugout real quickly. Good bullpen work by both sides. Good breaking ball by Fernando in the count, so two. And a one two pitch great sharp breaking ball for the strikeout. The Nats lefties Kroll and Abad are dominating right now. Well they've been filthy rotten and dirty and Abad right there with the curveball, 82 miles an hour on the outer half for strike three. Top of the order Dexter Fowler a walk a run score to base hit. One for three. And in the series, two for 11. Abad goes first pitch changeup. Now Fowler's two for three career against him with two hits in this series. And that's a big run for the Rockies. Fowler has stolen 12 bases in 14 attempts. So keep an eye on him. As Drew Storing gets ready for the Nats. That would be with Kadire in mind. There's still a couple hitters away. LeMayhew here. The next spot after him is the pitcher spot when they took out Carlos Gonzalez with a big lead. Nobody on deck yet. And it's interesting when that spot rolls around FP. They would have to pinch hit for their closer if they don't let him bat. Yeah, nobody up in the Rockies bullpen either. So, is this going to be Rex Brothers? It is. Interesting. Well, you figure you're safe with a five-run lead, making a double switch to give Carlos Gonzalez the rest of the day off. And it's a move that could come back to haunt the Rockies. This ninth inning will tell the tale. 2 0 count now. LeMayu, one for four today with an RBI. Having a really good series. Eight for 17. He's driven in four. There have been some interesting moves in this series from rookie manager Walt Weiss. I think the most interesting was Adam LaRoche hitting with runners on second and third and first base open and two outs. And Jason Worth on deck against a righty. A lot of managers will go for that righty righty matchup regardless of who's on deck and especially with the way the Roche has been swinging split the gap for a triple. A couple of RBIs. Yeah, that was in the fifth inning. A two run frame got the Nats well on the way to a 5 1 win. And LeMayu hacks it off to the right side. Two balls one strike. Big out for obvious reasons, but if you get him out, then Brothers has to swing. 
out of play right side. You don't think he's going to try to sacrifice two guys along to second and third with one out. Yeah, he hasn't had any at bats this year. Rex Brothers. And a 2-2 up the middle. They'll have to hurry. Desmond won't throw it. Dexter Fowler just kind of stopped running and stood in the baseline there. And Ian Desmond decided not to chance a relay. He knew the pitcher was coming up, didn't he? You wonder if he had a chance to tag Dexter Fowler right here, but he put the brakes on. Good feed to Desmond. Take the force out. Smart play with Rex Brothers coming up. Yeah, Desmond knew the pitcher was on deck. Two outs, lefty lefty matchup with a runner at first, strike one. And if you're the Nationals, the inning has to end here. Unless you want to bring in Drew Storton to face Michael Kadir. That's why Drew's been up and warm. And Abad gets the pitcher to a count of 0 2. Let that guy's next at bat be in Boston. A quiet block by Suzuki there. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the first dugout that wouldn't mind seeing him hitting in the tenth either. <laughs> That's true. Well, I was thinking next bit at yeah. bat in Boston after a walk off here. But <laughs> I like it. You would take either one. Abad takes care of business. A two strikeout ninth. Marrero, Suzuki, Lombardosi. Straight ahead. The bottom of the ninth, Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight inviting you to stick around for next extra post game as soon as this ball game is over. Again, showing why you can't count out this ball club, even though they're down at one point here, seven to two. As I fix my collar here, Johnny, this humidity turns it up. Yeah, uh, nice offensive comeback. A uh, lot of base hits, uh, big base hits, and the bullpen. Wow, lights out in that bullpen. Pretty, pretty serious stuff. Five and a third to six strikeouts. And uh, let's just let's close this thing out. Close it That'd out. That'd be the biggest win. win of the season, wouldn't it? You're not kidding. Let's go back upstairs. FP, nice comeback for the guys so far. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Johnny, that's a fantastic tie, a rally tie if I've ever seen it. It's time for your Hyundai drive of the game. New thinking, new possibilities. Great move by Davey Johnson, bringing Jonathan Solano in here, splitting the gap. Scored Ryan Zimmerman all the way from first to make it a 7-6 to six ball game. Big knock for the Onion. And that is your Hyundai drive of the game. Biggest swing of the year for him. One of the biggest hits of his career. Maybe his Major League highlight right there. Even though he did get his first home run in Toronto last year. It'll be Chris Marrero, Kurt Suzuki, and Steve Lombardosi. And all three of these batters have faced Rex Brothers this year. 
Marrero is 0 for 2 against him. Chris 1 for 4 with an RBI ground ball today. And Chris starting to look like a notorious first pitch swinger. He's done that three out of four ABs today. Takes that one. It's a strike on the inside edge. He's got some pop. Ten homers, 40 RBIs at Triple A this year for the recall. He'll pull it left side, and that's Nolan Arenado. One out. Suzuki and Lombardozzi, the next two. Nats haven't been able to go deep today, but when they do, it's $250 to the Children's National Medical Center every time they homer this year. That's from our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Suzuki, 0 for 3, sack fly. Career against brothers, 0 for 1. Twenty six hits in this game. Colorado leads seven six. Adam LaRoche the only remaining bat that could come into play. Somebody gets on base here. Even though it would be a lefty lefty matchup. And LaRoche is one for three career against brothers if it gets down. Well Spans batting nine so we have to go farther than that. After the double switch. Suzuki takes it low to and run. I've seen Kurt Suzuki when he gets ahead in the count, let it rip. Trying to get on base any way he can. In the air, right center field. Michael Kadire looking right into the sun, two outs. It'll be up to Steve Lombardozzi, who's had a three hit day. Raising his batting average to 235 from 223. He's 0 for 1 career against Rex Brothers. Next pitch will be important. It's 1 1 right now. And he misses with it. 90, 2 and 1. 97. Lombardozzi looking to get on base, also looking for his fourth hit of the day. For Tyler Colvin and the Rockies get a split in the series. The Nats with a very impressive battle back today. Coming up a little bit short. Maybe a case of too little too late with those two out hits FP but a nice battle right down to the last. Well it's a good fight. What are you going to do? But when you talk about six runs on 13 hits with this staff that's going to win a lot of games. So good fight today. Came up short. Get them on Tuesday. Rockies get the split. Two and two homestand for the Nationals. For FBN, for Julie, Bob Carpenter. I'll try to get on Tuesday night against Arizona. 6.30, Nats Extra. And then, on the mound, Geo. This has been a massive presentation. Stay tuned now, Nats Extra postgame with Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight at the ballpark. Coming up next, we'll see you Tuesday night. And from the booth at Nationals Park, so long for just a while.